British Prime Minister Theresa May is heading back to the drawing board after her government's narrow win in a no-confidence vote in Parliament. Now she is appealing for cross-party political consensus to move forward with Brexit. Now May prevailed in the no-confidence vote only with the help of her allies in the Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party. Her victory came a day after lawmakers dealt her a crushing defeat by rejecting her Brexit deal. Now, she may have survived those challenges, but if the UK is to have an orderly departure from the EU on March 29th, that deadline, compromise will be essential. This is what May said after last night's vote. So now MPs have made clear what they don't want. We must all work constructively together to set out what Parliament does want. That's why I'm inviting MPs from all parties to come together to find a way forward. One that both delivers on the referendum and can command the support of Parliament. This is now the time to put self-interest aside. And let's get the latest now from our correspondent in London, Birgit Mass. So, Birgit, Parliament has voted to keep Theresa May in power. How is this likely to impact Brexit? Well, Theresa May has survived for now, but what a chaos here in London. There is really not a clear way forward, whoever you speak to. The question is, is Theresa May still the right person to move the country forward? And many here in London doubt it. But for now, she's at the helm. The expectation is here in London, many political observers seem to think that the UK is going to have no other choice but to ask for an extension of the time period, an extension of Article 50. And also the expectation here in London is that the EU would grant that because they would have to explain to the European Union that the deadline is too tight, the end of March is too tight, and then to ask whether there is a possibility to leave at a later stage, maybe in the summer, some are even talking uh, at the end of the year. Of course, there will be all sorts of practical hurdles, but this seems to be, it's nothing official, but it seems to be the expectation here in London. Meantime, she's due to present a new Brexit strategy to Parliament on Monday. Um, what could that entail? Your guess is as good as mine. Those on the right, uh, on the hard Brexit uh, divide, they seem to think, well, she has to reach out to the hard Brexiteer element of her party. They're called the so-called European Research Group, and they are saying without us, she just doesn't have a majority. Others are thinking, and I have to say that uh, this is uh, also my understanding, that there is a majority, could be a majority, for a softer Brexit. Uh, the so-called Norway model, so to, to, for the UK to be similar, like Norway in the customs union, possibly in the uh, single market, that that's a more realistic options. But we'll have to see what it is that Theresa May is going to go for. She's going to suss out uh, the mood in Parliament and then she'll make a first statement next week. And when we look at all these attempts at consensus building, I mean, she's been reaching out to all parties to try and find this Brexit solution. But after all that's happened there, there are doubts about her ability to do just that. Could she maybe hand this off to somebody else, Birgit? Yes, indeed, and she has already uh, done so. Those on, in other parties are, are really reproaching her for not having reached out and exactly not having done this in the past. She hasn't reached out enough to other, uh, other parties. I've just been to a briefing this morning where one of her former uh, ex-ministers, uh, Conservative MP, has said, well, if she is the right person um, who people are trusting to, to, do, to do that and to have these cross-party talks, well, that remains to be seen. So he was very doubtful about that. But David Liddington, which is a, who is in fact her more, more or less her deputy prime minister, is uh, somebody who is going to do these talks. So it might not be Theresa May herself, but there will be high level talks, cross party talks. And many are saying, well, she should have really done that a long time ago. Thank you so much for your reporting from London. Birgit Mass. Well, here in Germany, the latest events in London have been received with pleas for clarity and for unity. This is what the Vice Chancellor and Finance Minister Olaf Scholz had to say.
Of course, the focus in future must now be on the remaining 27 EU member states. They have shown in the last two years that they can act cohesively and achieve a lot together. So, let's get more now from DW Simon Young, who is at the German Parliament, which is debating the voting on the country's own Brexit legislation today. Simon, welcome. We just heard there the German Vice Chancellor saying that... Um, they should essentially forget the Brits. Let's look after ourselves now. Is this a similar tone that we're hearing also from other German leaders? Yes, Sarah, I don't think that's the message that German politicians uh, exactly want to send. They certainly don't want to be seen as blocking uh, any potential moves towards a solution and a way out of this Brexit mess. Uh, but equally, that message of, you know, let's make sure that Germany doesn't get caught up in the, the, these problems and doesn't sort of catch a cold from uh, Brexit, uh, that's important to keep the uh, remaining 27 EU countries together, people are saying. But they're also saying, as Chancellor Merkel said yesterday, let's keep talking, let's uh, talk about the future relationship between Britain outside the EU uh, and the, uh, the rest of the European Union. Uh, so there's a sort of constructive posture, even if nobody here can really see uh, the way forward. So is Germany preparing for a worst case scenario and is today's vote part of those preparations? Yeah, I think there's a lot of concern here, particularly from businesses, uh, about a potential no deal uh, Brexit, uh, because that could be really bad for German businesses. Uh, a lot of politicians saying, well, you know, let's make sure that we stick to our line. Let's not confuse the, Brit the Brits even more uh, by somehow offering new concessions or renegotiating uh, the uh, deal. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of concern, as I say, among businesses. We heard earlier from uh, a senior member of the Free Democrats, a, a party that's often said to be close to business. Uh, here's what he had to say. Now it's time to inform the people of Germany, German citizens in Britain, as well as our businesses on both sides of the English Channel, what such a disorderly Brexit precisely means. Fascinating stuff. So, I mean, it seems as if the Germans are really on top of this, Simon. But, um, I mean, can they really help uh, guard against a so-called disorderly Brexit? Well, uh, the German government says that it's made a lot of preparations. It's uh, introduced some legislation to help businesses and also have private citizens to continue to live and operate uh, in Germany, uh, even if they are uh, trading with Britain or indeed if they're British citizens. Uh, and uh, it's made the preparations so far that it can. It's continuing to make them. They say they're prepared for all outcomes, including a no-deal Brexit. Simon Young at the German Bundestag. Thank you.